take this a notch higher. A ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of 14.7 meters per second from a platform 19.6 meters above the ground level. Then find the time taken for the ball to reach the ground and the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground. Now, again, we will summarize our questionnaire diagram. So a ball is thrown vertically upwards with a velocity of that and it's on a platform 19.6 meters above the ground. So this is the platform we are talking about right here. This platform is 19 point six meters above the ground and this ball is thrown vertically upward so it will go up then come back down this is our ground so a ball is thrown vertically upward with a velocity of 14.7 meters per second so it means it's going upward with the velocity of 14.7 meters per second from a platform that is 19.6 meters above the ground this is the ground then they're asking us to find the time taken for the ball to reach the ground so it means that the ball goes up then it comes back down to the ground how much how long is it going to take for it to move from here up to there now let's try and first of all analyze the parameters before we answer this question let's analyze the parameters in this question as far as motion in a straight line is concerned we have the displacement s we have the initial velocity we have the final velocity we have the acceleration and we have the time summarized as suvat now the displacement when we are talking when we are dealing with motion under the influence of gravity displacement is a vector quantity initial and final velocity these are also velocity they are both vector quantities acceleration is a vector quantity it's only time that is not that is a scalar quantity. So what does that mean? Because we are dealing with vector quantities, we, has, we are supposed to take into consideration their direction as well. All these are vector quantities. And by definition, we know that a vector quantity is a physical quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So it means that as far as this motion is concerned, you will find that this motion is first moving upwards, then when it goes, reaches maximum height, it changes its direction and it moves downwards. So it means that all that is going to change, it's going to affect the signs or the, the signs of these quantities. Displacement is the distance in a specified direction. Now it means that if this is where you threw your ball from, this is your initial platform. It means that when you move upwards, our displacement will be positive. When you move downwards, our displacement will be negative. If we are talking about velocity, initial velocity and final velocity, if you're moving upwards, it means the velocity will be positive. If you're moving downwards, it will mean the, the velocity is negative. If we're talking about acceleration, now when it comes to acceleration, if you're moving downwards, it is positive. And it is positive because the force of acceleration, the gravitational force of attraction, acts downwards. So the acceleration is positive downwards, but when you move upwards, it means you're moving against the force of attraction or against gravity. So acceleration will be negative as you're moving upwards. So it means that in numbers like this, where uh, the direction of the motion is changing, we will have to respect the signs on these parameters. Now, speaking of acceleration, because this thing is moving upwards, the acceleration is going to be negative all through. How? This is the explanation. Let's consider, let's say the body, the ball is moving from that point to that point. So it's moving up. It means that here our initial velocity is a positive. Here our final velocity is also positive as it's moving from here to there, moving upwards. So what is the, the sign on the acceleration as it moves up? It means that our acceleration here, A, which is actually G, is going to be equal to final velocity, V, minus initial velocity, U, over the time. So final velocity, which is positive, minus initial velocity, which is also positive over time. And you'll find that the acceleration you're going to get here is going to be negative. Why? Remember, as you're throwing a stone upwards, the higher it goes, it goes with its speed reducing. Its velocity keeps reducing until it reaches zero. When the velocity reaches zero, then it comes back down. So it means 
this initial velocity if it is 10 the final velocity will be less than 10 because it as it's moving up its speed is reducing and so because it's it's its speed is less it means that here our final v is a small number minus our u which is a bigger number so definitely the answer we are going to be getting here will be a negative answer divided by time so our acceleration will be negative and it, that's why we say that when acceleration is moving upwards for uh, particles that are under the influence of gravity, the acceleration is negative g for a particle moving up. Now let's look at it when it's coming back down. Remember, it has been moving up, positive velocity, positive velocity. Then it's coming down. Let's take a case in point. We're having that point and that point. As it's moving back downwards, we're having the final velocity here and the initial velocity there. We are considering this motion that it's coming, starting from here, coming back to down here. Our initial velocity here is negative and our final velocity here is also negative. These are negatives because now they are moving downwards. The direction has flipped. So what is our the sign of our acceleration? We know that acceleration in that case is going to be equal to our final velocity, which is negative v minus our initial velocity, which is negative u, divide that by t. And of course, this negative and negative becomes positive, will remain with negative v plus u over t. And we shall end up with our acceleration. Is it going to be a positive or a negative? Now let's analyze this. As this particle is moving from here and it's coming back down, yes, the velocities will be negative because now the motion is moving downwards. But remember, as it's coming towards acceleration, its speed increases because now it is being pulled by this force of gravity. Previously, as it was moving up, its speed was reducing because the gravity was pulling it downwards. So its speed was reducing until it became zero. Then it starts moving down. Of course, as it moves down, the higher it, the, the lower it moves, the higher the speed. The speed keeps increasing. So it means that this value of v here is going to be higher than that u. That value, the, ve the velocity here is going to be less than the velocity here. So it means that here you're going to have a negative velocity which is higher plus a velocity which is low. Now let's say this was negative 30 this is 30 meters per second if it's that if you dropped it off here at 10 uh, at 10 meters per second it's going to keep increasing to 30 and so forth so you're having a negative number that is so large and you're adding it to a small positive number a small value of u it means that if this value of v was 30 it's negative 30 plus 10 if this was 10 i'm giving an example so it means that our overall answer here, whatever the figures will be, will always be giving you a negative. So that is why even as it is coming down, our acceleration due to gravity will always be a negative g. So that is why in this calculation, as we are trying to find the time taken for the ball to start from here to go up to down here, our value of g, the gravity will be negative because it is negative as you're moving up and even as you're coming back down. So with G, that is how it is. Our S, the displacement, will be positive upwards and negative downwards. Our velocities, if you're moving upwards, they're positive. If you're coming downwards, they're negative. And this is our point of reference. Now let's go ahead and start answering this question. The question is saying that the time taken for the ball to reach the ground. So again, we shall be using our equations of motion. is going to be equal to UT plus a half A t squared now our initial velocity is 14.7 so you have 14.7 now initial velocity is positive it's moving downward so it's positive 14.7 times t um, plus a half times acceleration now our acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 i already explained where the negative is coming from in the first case it's even going again it's grabbing a negative 9.8 times t squared is going to be s now our value of s remember they're telling us that what time is it at what time the time taken for the ball to reach the ground so for this ball to move from here to go up and reach the ground it will be its displacement will be negative 19.6 because 
the displacement will be below this point of reference where it started from. So our displacement here will be negative 19.6. And definitely when we work out the values of t here, you're going to end up with a quadratic equation in t. t squared minus 3t minus 4 is equal to 0. We end up with our value of t being either 4 or t being either negative 1. So uh, we shall take value of 4 as our answer. We can't have negative 1 as our answer because we, can't, we do not have negative time. Now looking at part B of the question, we are requiring us to find the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground. So when it moves, it hits the ground. Definitely as it's hitting the ground, its velocity is negative. So using V is it going to be equal to U plus AT. So the final velocity definitely is the negative v because it's moving downwards as it's hitting so negative v is going to be equal to the initial velocity our initial velocity is a positive so it's 14.7 so it's going to be 14.7 um, the acceleration remember is negative 9.8 so it's going to be minus 9.8 times the time now the time taken for it to reach the ground is 4 according to our previous question. So it's times 4. So we go ahead and calculate. Uh, we, we are going to end up with our, uh, our value of V giving us negative 24.5 meters per second. Now, of course, our neg this negative here simply shows, signifies that the ball is acting downwards. So the velocity with which it hits the ground is 24. This brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Feel free to check out other excellent videos on the channel and don't forget to subscribe. For Kisembo Academy, this is Anwar Jangakuramia helping you manifest excellence.